You know, Carl, Gail Harris is a award-winning writer and a teacher of the intuitive process. Uh, her latest book, Finding Zoe, it's about a deaf woman's story of identity, love, and adoption, co-authored by uh, Brandy uh, Ramos. Uh, Gail is also the author of Your Heart Knows the Answer. And for uh, two years, she's lived and worked at the uh, Yoga Center uh, and Health Center in Lenox, Massachusetts. So, Gail, welcome to Smith Sabatino. Thank you. It's great to be here, Roland. I actually grew up in New York, so I remember you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Those are the ancient days, and we have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, but, I remember. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I was intrigued when uh, your publicist put out this little uh, tickler that talked about the intuitive process and, and how it reveals uh, the need to trust yourself and make choices that are right for you. What is it about the intuitive process that, that you have find so valid? Well, what I find so valid is, is that it really helps us to find personal fulfillment for ourselves. It's that you know, knowing that we have a little gut feeling, a little inkling that we have about something. And, you know, it, sometimes it's called the still small voice. And it's not called that for nothing because a lot of we don't trust it all the time. You know, we're not really, society doesn't really, um, you know, talk about it very much or reward us for listening to it. But it's really just as important as all the science and the analytics because it really helps us to make the right choices for us, you know, for our own lives. I, I mean, I, I'm a happy person because I trust my intuition. That doesn't well, yeah. mean it's not hard, though. No, well, of course. I remember as a, as a little boy, uh, my mother referring to woman's intuition. Is it now is intuition endemic only to the female psyche? Well, absolutely not. You know, that's sort of a, a catch-all phrase. I think there's some truth behind it, though, which is that um, I think in a way it might come easier for women, or it used to come easier for women, because we just. We're just in touch. It's easier for us to tap into that inner knowing, but not at all. I mean, I think if you take any kind of business person, a man or a woman, who, you know, whatever the sex is, I think when you talk to successful people, they will say that they follow that inner guidance. Do you think it's, uh, for women it's intuition and for men it's hunches? Uh, you know, I, I really think they're one and the same thing, Roland. Um, our intuition, there's a lot of names for it. It's You could call it a gut feeling, our inner voice, and inner knowing, but regardless of what you call it, it's that inner knowing that guides us to make the best choices in our, in our life, you know, to be the best person we could be. Who are, who am I as the most fulfilled, as the most, as the best person I can be? And our intuition guides us to live a life and make the choices that will allow that to manifest for ourselves. It's pretty important stuff. Hi, Gail. This is Carl Sabatino. How are you? Good. Good um, Carl. I'm listening attentively, and I w the question I have is what happens when your intuition at times is wrong? And I I've been a, an individual who's lived much of my life on my gut feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, in business uh, and in my personal life, right. and sometimes it has been wrong, which has shaken me to the core. Tell mm -hmm. me, tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think that it can appear wrong in that moment because sometimes when we're in the middle of something and things don't go exactly the way we want it, we could think that our intuition is wrong. But I wonder sometimes if a person could take a step back and see that we may not have gotten what we wanted, but in the long run, we've gotten, we get what we need. I think there's a real distinction between that, and sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between what we want and what we need. Uh, Gail, where does it come from? Is, is, it, is it a spiritual thing? Well, that's a great question. For me, it is a spiritual thing. You know, I, I believe... Personally, I believe that there's an order to this crazy life, and it's a good order in spite of the difficult things that happen to us. You know, some people might express that by saying that things happen for a reason or things are meant to be. I like to quote Mick Jagger, who said, you can't always get what you want, but you get what you need. I believe that 
our, as I was saying before, that our intuition helps us to get what we need, and it may not be what we want. So for me, it's spiritual, but I think everybody's relationship with their intuition, it's a very, very personal relationship. I wouldn't tell anybody what I think their intuition should tell them, or really even that anybody should believe me right now. I'm, I'm really here to share some of my experiences and what I've learned. So logic comes from intellect. So Correct. intuition then comes must come from some other place besides intellect. It has to come from the essence of what we are uh, beyond the physical. Well, I believe that personally, yes. That's why I believe that it is a spiritual thing. I don't know if everybody would believe that. Like, I, I believe that when you're connected in with that, with your intuition, you're connected into that part of you that's connected to something greater than who you are, and that's what guides us. I mean, that's why it's spiritual for me. But I think some people might just really feel satisfied by saying that my intuition connects me to my deepest part of myself. And, and leave it at that, if, and, if you know the dis- if you can catch that distinction. And this is not uh, attached to dogma. It's not attached to any specific uh, uh, religion. It, it, it's, it's something beyond religion. I believe that, yes. Okay. And I believe that once you connect it to some kind of dogma or something like that, you, you shut it down immediately. I think it, it's really about openness. It's really, you know, finding that place inside setting aside all this distracting things that we get caught up in, all the things that we were taught that we want. And when we're just open, you know, that that, that guidance will be there. It will, it will never fail us. You know, it's always there every second of every day. We, we may not be able to access it at will, but it's always there guiding us to gain personal fulfillment. Gail, isn't it about paying attention and listening in some ways? Oh, completely. Com- right. And what are you paying attention to? I mean, you bring up a really good point because, um, you know, if we pay attention to everything that's outside of us, like we spend a lot of time on the Internet or we even just listen to the radio or go to school and, and pay attention to what everybody else tells us is good for us, then we're paying, attention, we're paying attention to the wrong thing if we want to connect in with our intuition. It's, it's, it's an inner listening, an inward listening. It's, you know, it's very different than what some of us may be used to. And you have to sort of, well, you have to really want it a lot because the distractions are very great. You have to really almost crave it and want and really know why do I want to pay attention to that still small voice and then you know, learn how to do it, practice doing it. It's an inner listening. Have you ever uh, listened to your intuition and it's changed your life? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) All the time. But um, I guess the main example that I could give you is this, this last book. That my my latest book that I've just written. You mentioned that uh, it's, called, it's entitled Finding Zoe, and it's my co-author's memoir. And um, writing that book really ha- was one of the greatest experiences of my life because it really tells the story about how several people followed their intuition during a very difficult time and the miracle that happened as a result, but also just the the way that the project came to me really came to me as a result of me following my intuition or trusting my gut feeling. As one of you had said before about, you know, you trust your hunches in business. And I just, I went for something. I trusted my gut. And it really turned out to be just one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life, writing this book. Well, that's wonderful. And again, the book is called uh, uh, Finding Zoe. It's a a deaf woman story of identity and, and love, adoption. And uh, you co-authored that with uh, Brandy Ramos? Rarest, Rarest. yes. And she's Rarest. actually a former Miss Deaf America, born hearing, and became deaf at six years old. And the story tells her journey. to it's Through her personal story, Finding Self-Acceptance, the book takes a look at issues that we can all relate to, such as finding our place in the world and fitting in, being judged and judging others and judging ourselves so harshly, and then through trusting ourselves and our intuition, moving past all that so that we can, again, fulfill our dreams in life. The story, it it sort of takes a look at how what seems horrible up close 
can be beautiful from a distance. Well, I have to thank you, uh, Gail Harris, for taking time to be with us on Smith Sabatino today and talking about uh, intuition and hunches and, and, and basically following them. And let's, uh, you know, I think we should do that. In fact, my hunch is that we ought to say, say, say goodbye. goodbye to Gail. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. It was a delight. Thank you, Gail. It was a pleasure. Thank you.